Hi, welcome to another episode of TFT Hyper Roll, where I show you some builds I'm using, hope they help you out, and also we're trying to raise money for our kids' middle and high school tuition. That's what this channel is all about. We're not asking for donations. We don't even have a link, but if you could hit that like button, that would help a lot because the video will go out to more people and we'll make more revenue from it. There was an easy call of which direction I wanted to go in this match because it handed me a Nunu right out of an NPC capsule and sitting on my bench are the components for the Runin's Hurricane and the Bloodthirster, which as I said in my last video linked up above, are the key elements for making an abomination. And I'm thinking there might be an opportunity right now to go with a combination of abomination and hellion. And this was recorded after the hotfix came through. So now that we have the three main characters, it's time to switch to the abomination build to start. So the first thing is the Runin's Hurricane onto Callista. Then, of course, the Bloodthirster onto Brand because every AP character needs a Bloodthirster. Thirster. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that in general, but for this build it works. Uh, here we don't even have to get as far as our zombie from hell coming out because we're able to finish the person off in the first round. But the goal here is going to be to have the Hellions sort of as our front line and characters that will go down fairly quickly, allowing the Abomination to come out early. We want to ultimately put a tank item on Nunu because the Abomination is going to get three items, one from each of the three Abomination characters closest to the grave. And so we're only putting one item on Callista, that's the Hurricane, one item on Brand, that's the Bloodthirster, and then probably, depending on how the rest of the game goes, we could end up with multiple items on Nunu because we want Nunu to tank for as long as possible. He's a really, really good character out there and a strong tank. We've reached that magical point in the game where we get Radiant items, which may or may not suck. It's not that they suck, it's just sometimes it doesn't give you what you're looking for, and I see a lot of people complaining about that. But in this case, we got the Titan's Vow, which is the upgraded Titan's Resolve, and it goes straight onto Nunu because I want a chance of that getting onto the Abomination. So it could just end up with a Chain Vest, or it could end up with a Titan's Vow. Obviously, we want the Titan's Vow because that will be the stronger item for it, and here he comes with his Titan's Vow, ready to just beat anyone up who's in his way. Punch, 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 and goodbye. The attack speed's a little bit lower due to the hot fix. We pick up a Lulu here because our goal is to pick up as many Hellions as possible. We like to reach that four Hellion, four Abomination mark. Hellions in the first level, we're not going for gold Hellions. They're going to go down quickly, but once three of them go down, those three will pop back up and they will fight alongside the Abomination and even this really well-stocked Tristana cannot get through it, and that was with just the Chain Vest on it. Grab the needlessly large rod here because if you have a chance to put a Morella Namicon on cannon, it's a good idea. He's going to travel throughout the entire team on the other side, or at least a large part of them, because he goes from the closest to the furthest away. And that will add an additional burn, which will add more damage, slow their healing, and allow the Abomination a little bit more time and have a little bit less to get through. You can see it works absolutely wonderfully here as the Abomination is able to take things out. It's time to put out our fourth Hellion and get that increased attack speed. I'm a little torn between Lulu and Tristana, ultimately settling for Tristana right now because without another Mystic on the board, Lulu just isn't as strong. Here we put three tank items onto Nunu. We still don't have a two-star silver Nunu, so I just want to make him as tanky as possible, and any one of those three items are going to be good to put onto our final abomination. This team is probably going to be our toughest team to get through because they have a lot of attack damage, a lot of physical damage, and with an Olaf with that build, even though the Rage Blade is going to max out, it's enough to get through 
quickly, especially with the Abomination being nerfed a little bit. We switch out Tristana for Fiddlesticks because it's better to have four Abomination than four Hellion. And then we flip Lulu for Ziggs for the Mystic buff. This is going to be good against almost any team because as I've mentioned in a previous video, most ults from characters such as Lucian, such as Senna, such as a lot of what you're seeing here may scale off their physical damage, but they actually do magic damage. And the Mystic buff is giving magic protection to the entire team. So you saw Lucian unload his entire culling directly into the Abomination who took very little damage. It obviously helped that he had the stone plate, but it also helped that he had the Mystic buff at that point. With an open spot, we can put back out our fourth Hellion, choosing Ziggs because it will trigger the Spellweaver buff. This is not going to be huge because Brand is only rocking a Bloodthirster, but along with a now three-star Gold Callista, I'm hoping this is going to be a really solid combo going forward, as Callista will be able to create some sustained damage and do a lot of work from the back, leaving the Abomination not as much to clean up in the end. And you see it all worked pretty well here, even as the other team was able to put a Teemo out. Right here, we pick up Garen and Action just to see how everything's going to go. I'm leaning towards putting Garen in and possibly switching out Kled because Garen and Poppy together will create the Night Buff. But Poppy is still only one star, which is going to make it difficult. Here we're going to see again, it's against this team that is all physical damage. And Olaf, even though he's now maxed his attack speed with only one character left on my board, I'm able to do a lot of damage, but cannot take him out. The Rage Blade is maxed, but he's got the Radiant Bloodthirster, known as the Blessed Bloodthirster, and that is going to make him very, very difficult to get through. So when the time comes, we may have to completely adjust strategy. For now, it's time to put out Garen, and even though I'd love to trigger that night buff, I just can't see putting in a one star. But along comes one of these, and I toy with the concept of the Archangel Staff, but ultimately, I want to grab the Knight Emblem because I want the Knight buff across the entire team so it can be blocking a little bit of that incoming damage and maybe give me that little tiny extra bit I need to get through what I need to. Two star on Garen and I just load him up with every item possible that I have right now since he's going to be one of the stronger characters on the board and hopefully hold up long enough so that he can help our monstrosity take things down. There's a Teemo out there and it's time to grab him, but this time I'm not selling him for gold because there is a plan to go along with this Teemo. This particular fight is against one of the teams we've been consistently beating, and I think the Mystic buff has a large part to do with that. Again, you get to see Lucian unleash the entire culling into the Abomination, but the rapid fire cannon on Lulu really pays off dividends as she's able to transform him and knock him out. Now the only player left is that one that's all physical damage. So the Mystic buff is not going to serve us well anymore. I decide to put in Teemo and throw the rapid fire cannon on him and hope that his mushroom slowing effects and dot effects will enable the monstrosity to do more damage than before and take Olaf down. Here you see the effect of that. Teemo is able to hide for a long time as the monstrosity is able to build power. Olaf and Nidalee had maxed out their speed, so they were capped and I was able to win that fight. But this is really one of those games in which it's going back and forth. It's not like I won that last fight so decisively that I know I'm going to win. A couple of extra hits, a critical at the right place, and everything changes. Here, their Galio is able to draw Teemo off his main target, so Teemo doesn't stay up as long, and even though Olaf has maxed his attack speed, it really doesn't matter because that Blessed Bloodthirster is doing enough to keep him alive long enough to take down the monstrosity and turn this into a one round game. But luck, again, luck, it's always luck. We find the Silver Teemo, and now with one health left, we're in the final match. I put Timo back to where he was before as I had tried to sort of outposition them. 
The Galio taunt last time was very devastating and kept Timo from throwing out as many mushrooms as I needed. This time, even when he goes down, he ends up in a far corner, and so he's able to keep throwing mushrooms out as the monstrosity does his job and finishes off their nidalee. And it's GG for everyone because we both had a good time and it really came down to the very last thing. But Hellion, monstrosity abomination, it does still work. Hope you have an absolutely awesome day.